Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Pastor Ron Thompson. I'm from Tampa, Florida, and I have the privilege of presenting the message today, which is the gospel clarity and expectation. And uh, what I was uh, uh, like to share with you is just a little bit of my testimony. Um, my background in the faith that I grew up in as a child was Catholicism. I lived here in the Chicagoland area. My parents grew up Catholic, and that's all I knew. And I remember as a kid asking my parents questions. And I would ask the why questions. You know, why this? Why that? You know, why if the, you know, the priest says, you know, you're forgiven all your sins, why do we have to go into a box and talk to some guy? You know, I was like, I was like why, why did we have to do that? And I remember asking my mother, you know, why don't we ever read the Bible? Because we never read the Bible as a family. And, and mom was very sincere and said, you know, Ronnie, it's not for us to read. It's for a priest to interpret and tell us what it means. And that's how I grew up. And then I kind of was, you know, hunting around, searching, trying to figure things out. And one day, somebody loved me enough to invite me to a little Bible study. And I met a, a gentleman. His name is Oscar Woodall. I don't know if you know Woody, how to Oscar Woodall. A dear, dear saint. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, I went to that Bible study that day. I could live in Tampa, went all the way to Orlando. And it started at 7 in the morning. I'm thinking, wow, I've got to wake up early and, and, you know, to go see this guy. But, you know, I said, yeah, I'll go. And what a great decision that was. And uh, with Oscar Woodall, I learned a little bit about this dispensation of grace. And then a couple weeks later, I happened to be going up to Chicago, and then I learned that this guy, Pastor Richard Jordan, lives in uh, the Glendale Heights area. And just so happens that my parents lived right around that area. I was literally like one town over and never heard about the grace message my whole adult or my, my youth all the way to you know, moving to Florida. And then literally uh, by moving to Florida, I have to learn about the grace message going all the way back to my beginning. But I am so grateful and thankful for it. Um, I do want to go and, and give you a couple of passages of scripture that are important to find out who we are, and what our nature was, especially for those that are saved now. And I'd like to have you open up the book of Romans. If you can go to Romans chapter number 1, verse 21. And this is really focusing on the natural man and who we, who we were in Adam, if you will, and who we were as a lost individual. In Romans chapter 1, verse number 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. And this is man's state now. They're professing themselves to be wise. They, and because of that, you know what they did? They became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into, image, into an image made like to corruptible man and birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Do you know what I think about that? I think with that verse about all the different animals and everything, what comes to mind of an idol with all types of animals in it? Anybody have an idea? Totem pole. Isn't that something? And it just, it, doesn't that sound like a totem pole right there? You know, with all these images and everything and these, these idols and so on. Wherefore God also gave them up unto uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a what? Into a lie. And they worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. That is man's state, lost man. Lost man is that way because of our ancestry. Our great, 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 grandpa and grandma, Adam and Eve. What happened there? What happened there? They were, they were walking with God. They had a wonderful relationship with their Savior. And something happened because God just gave a, 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 a very clear, concise statement that if you eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely what? Die. And what wound up happening, Eve, she saw that, 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 that fruit, that forbidden fruit, and she said, wow, you know, this looks appealing to the eyes. It's going to make us wise. We're going to be like God's, you know. She got deceived by Satan. Satan. Satan has a plan. He wants to take mankind out. He wants to get as many individuals into hell as he possibly can. 
Why? Because he knows he's going there, and the third of the angelic realm is following and going there as well. Correct? You bet, yes. So here we have sin entering in the world, and because of that sin, there is a consequence for sin. Death, hell, the lake of fire. So let's take a look at a couple more verses as far as man's plight. In Romans chapter number 3, verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There's how many righteous? None, none, none. For in verse number 23, Romans 3, 23, for how many have sinned? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. Now, something very interesting happened. Uh, my wife and I, we babysit our grandkids. Uh, my daughter and son-in-law, they work. And, uh, you know, my wife's at home with the grandkids. And one day, my, my grandson, he did something. Um, I asked him, I go, hey, Logan, did you eat your, your certain vegetables that, that, that you were eating? And, and he goes, yeah, Papa, I did. So I go and walk over to the kitchen where the garbage can is. He runs in front of me and blocks me. He's blocking me. And, you know, I go, did you eat that? And he goes, uh, yeah, Papa, I did. And, and I look, and I'm looking down there, and all of a sudden he realizes he got caught in a what? A lie. He was three years old. Who taught him how to lie? Did he go to school for that? Did the mommy and daddy teach him how to lie? No. How, how did he learn that? The sin cursed nature. Because why? Adam and Eve. Because of Adam and Eve, we have the sin cursed nature. The, sweet, wait, 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 the sweetest grandma in the world. The sweetest grandma. Do you know what? She has sinned. How many people have sinned? We all sinned. And because of that, there's a consequence for that sin. Do you know in, in uh, Isaiah... I'll give you this first if you want to take a look at it or if you want, write it down. Isaiah chapter number 64, verse number 6. In Isaiah 64, 6, it says, But we are all as unclean things, and all our unrighteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquity, like, it, uh, like the wind, have been taken away, take us away. And if you look at this, man's righteousness are as filthy what? Rags. Man's righteousnesses are as filthy rags to God. So I don't care how good you are, how good you spruce yourself up to make you look like you're it. God says it doesn't matter. It's filthy rags. And unfortunately, mankind has this self-righteous type of thinking. And what I find is a lot of the individuals that are really, really smart, I mean, the intellectuals that, I mean, they know so much. They've got brilliant brains and memories, and they can remember things like that. But they, a lot of times people have a hard time in the simplicity of the gospel. They have a hard time with it. You know, God, he recognizes that, and he has a solution for that. A couple of other verses. In Romans, or excuse me, in Revelation, let's go to Revelation. In Revelation chapter number 20, verse 15. In Revelation 20, 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the what? The lake of fire. Does that sound like a good place to be at? Has any of you ladies ever had a curling iron and burned yourself? Any of you ladies ever do that? Did it hurt a little bit? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Or how, yeah, he, yeah, the heat gun, the, uh, you know, how about the stove, the oven, and that type of thing? You ever burn yourself? Oh, can you imagine spending eternity in hell in the lake of fire? It's scary. It's scary. Let's take a look at another verse in Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians, in Paul's epistles, chapter number 4, and verse number 4. In 2 Corinthians 4, 4. And whom the God... This is the little G God now. Who is that representing? Mm -hmm. Satan. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them. The me them who? Mankind. Which believe not. So that, that little section of the gospel there is extremely important because now we are, we're recognizing that there is an adversary. 
that wants to do everything he can really to have us be dysfunctional as members of the body of Christ. He wants us to put away, you know, put, put away, you know, talking about the Bible and giving the gospel out and so on. Um, I asked a young lady that was over uh, at the uh, shop where you can get ice and water, and I was talking to her about her salvation, and she gave me a clear gospel message. And then what's the next thing I wanted to talk to her about? Some more specifics on knowing who you are as a member of the body of Christ. You've got to learn that. Very, very few people have I ever met that actually figured it out themselves by reading and studying the Bible. It's nice when you have somebody that loves you that will share that information for you. And that's part of who we are. That's part of who we are as a member of the body of Christ. We're helping those individuals. So if you look at another verse in 2 Corinthians, let's take a look at chapter 11, verse number 3. In 2 Corinthians 11, verse number 3, but I fear lest by any means as the, what's that next word? Serpent. As the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ. Isn't that something? He wants to do everything he can to make it hard for an individual to get saved. Now, there's some good news, and this is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful good news. Now, I'm going to share with you the gospel, and you might not have heard of it this way as far as what I'm going to introduce first here, but I'd like for you to take a look over at 1 Corinthians chapter number 14. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 14, I want you to go to verse 19. In 1 Corinthians 14, 19, yet in the church, I had rather speak, how many words? Five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. The apostle Paul, when he was going out ministering in the beginning of his ministry, there, there was you know, tongues where he could speak different languages and people can understand him and he had this communication to see the lost people getting saved and so on. But here he says, look, <coughs> I'd rather have you just speak five words with your understanding than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Why? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse number 3. In 1 Corinthians 15, 3, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that, now here are the five words, Christ died for our sins. The five most important words in the universe about us as members of the body of Christ, that we that put our faith exclusively in the shed blood, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, when you put your faith, and it's a heart issue, it's not a head issue, it's a heart issue, uh, by faith believing what the Lord Jesus Christ did at Calvary was fully paid for for your sin and mine. He paid our sin debt. Amen? As much as you have faith that those chairs are going to hold you up and you're not going to fall down, you have that faith in your Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I have faith in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know whose cross that is? That's my Lord and Savior's cross right there. It's not the Jews' cross. It's not the, it's not the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They crucified Christ. That's our cross for salvation today. And what's nice is the forbearance back here, that cross, that cross work, the forbearance of the saints back here were saved. The little flock that follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Their salvation is so critically important. They didn't understand what was going on with, why, did, why is Christ dying? And, and even told his apostles, hey, look, I'm going to have to die and rise the third day. And they didn't even believe it. They didn't understand it. It was confusing to them. But today in this dispensation of grace, we can know for absolute certainty who we are and what God's doing today. And that's wonderful. That's wonderful. That is life-changing. Take a look over at Romans chapter number 3. In Romans chapter 3, 
in verse number 26. In Romans 3, 26, to declare at this time, to, excuse me, <clears throat> to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Are you putting your faith in the Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ? I pray you do. I pray you do. And there's a job for us to do going out there witnessing to the lost. Now, 1 Corinthians, let's take a look. No, we're here in Romans. Let's stay in Romans for a second. Romans chapter 4, verse 3. Let's go there. In Romans 4, 3. What saith the Scriptures? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now, to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of what? Debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his what is counted for righteousness? Is what? His faith. Faith is the key. Your faith in our Savior is your salvation. A free gift. A free gift. <coughs> Excuse me. In Ephesians 2, verse 8. In Ephesians 2, 8. This is a passage of scripture that I have my grandson working on right now. And the, this message, this is important. <coughs> In Ephesians 2.8, hey, David, can you grab my drink and bring it up here, please? Pardon me. In Ephesians chapter number two, verse number eight, for by grace, God's grace, are you saved? Through what? There's that word again. Faith, faith, faith. It's an issue. It's a hard issue of faith. <coughs> for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God's identifying and saying, look, it's a faith issue. Your works isn't going to get you to heaven. If you look at verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We don't do good works to get saved. We do good works. Why? Because we're saved. Now, religion flips that around. What does religion do? They've got you doing all kinds of works to get saved. And where's that going to send you? Straight to hell. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know why my throat is so dry. Uh, but I do apologize. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse 21. In 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Now, this is part of the Trinity associated right here in this verse. <coughs> in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he, God, hath made him, the Lord Jesus Christ, to be what for us? To be sin for us. Who knew no sin? That, the purpose statement, that what? We might be made the righteousness of God in who? In him. And here we've got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit right here in the passage of Scripture. Take a look at Ephesians chapter number 1. In Ephesians 1. It's so critically important of, of understanding the importance of faith and putting your trust in something and putting your trust in something that's so specific and so clean and simple to understand that a child can understand it. The problem we have is with the adults understanding it. Uh, Ephesians 1.13, in whom you also trusted. After that, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you did what? You believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. We've got the sealing of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> it, I hope this tickle goes away. Um, take a look over at Hebrews chapter number 2, verse 2. In Hebrews chapter number 2. I know this is uh, Israel's mail in Hebrews, but it's such an important passage of Scripture because what this tells us 
<coughs> is a little bit more detail about our Lord Jesus Christ and what he experienced at Calvary. This is a very unique verse. So Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse number 2. Let's take a look at that. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking on the Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the, what's that next word? Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He went to that cross. He was getting tortured. The Jews, his people, that nation Israel, rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary's cross, what did he exhibit there internally? Joy. Who for the joy that was set before, before him endureth the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Our Lord and Savior willingly went on that cross. As I said earlier, that's his cross work at Calvary to pay for our sins. And what God looks at, God's looking at your heart. It's a heart issue. I have my family that are steeped still in the religion that I grew up in. Uh, we, had, we were in the van the other day, uh, a couple days ago, and I, and I, and I brought up again of, of the importance of trusting that the Lord Jesus Christ died for your sins. Oh, I know that. I know that. I know he did that. You can know intellectually that the Lord Jesus Christ died for your sins, but if you don't by faith believe it and trust it, you might have some concerns about your salvation, especially when you don't open the book up. God, Paul, the Apostle Paul, he's, he's talking to give attendance to doing what? Reading, reading that word of God. Read it, study it, learn it. Because you are, you are unique in God's family today. You're unique in a very, very certain way because our Lord and Savior, he's got a will Today. God has a will for mankind today. Take a look over 1 Timothy chapter number 2, verse 3. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, and verse number 3. <clears throat> for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Here's God's will right here. In verse 4, 1 Timothy 2, 4. Who will have all men to be saved and women... We're all, you're, you're part of man, ladies. And it's important that we recognize who will have God's will to have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of what? Truth. For there is what? One God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So you know and you have an understanding with regards to God's will today. And this is one aspect. God has many different uh, parts to his will, but this one specific one, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth, is God's will. Will all mankind be saved and come to the knowledge of truth? No or no? No. Why? Because God gives man a free will to do what? Choose. Who's making the choice? Every individual. You have the privilege of making that choice. Now, I think about a specific verse in Scripture. Take a look over at uh, um, in Luke, in the book of Luke. This is really a, a very interesting passage of Scripture. In Luke chapter number 16, <clears throat> we're going to talk about the rich man and Lazarus, okay? And there's something quite significant here. In Luke 16, verse number 19, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. Verse 20, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Now, when I think about that full of sores like that, you know who I think of? Job. He had Job all over his body. Boy, that poor guy, you know, all the boils and everything like that. Well, Lazarus, he was having some issues like that. <laughs> and desired, Lazarus desired to be fed with the crumbs, just the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked all the sores. And it came to pass 
that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into who? Abraham's bosom. Who was that beggar? Lazarus. The rich man also died and was buried. Now notice the rich man didn't have angels taking him. Lazarus did. So you know that movie Ghost that was on TV years and years ago with uh, you know the penny going up the wall and that type of thing? Anybody remember that movie? What was that called? I think it was called Ghost. Yeah, with Whoopi Goldberg was in there and that thing. Yeah. You know, yeah, so the bad guy had the angels coming to take him. It's the exact opposite of what the Bible says. The good guy, Abraham. He was there, and Lazarus, Abraham was there already, and here Lazarus coming with, the, with, with, with regards to the angels taking him there. And look at this, verse number 23. And in hell he lifted up his eyes. This is the rich man now. Being where? Where's the rich man? Being in where? Torments. And seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus uh, in Abraham's bosom. And here the rich man, he's crying and saying, Father Abraham. So what do we know about this guy? He's a what? He's a Jew. He's a Jew. He's saying, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Remember we talked about that curling iron and the burning and, you know, that type of thing? Let me tell you something. That's not a good place to be at. He's living in that torment today, still, thousands of years later. Look at this in verse number 25. But Abraham said, son, talking to the rich man, Remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted. Who's comforted? Lazarus is. And thou, the rich man, are tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, the rich man saying this now to Abraham, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Why? Because he's got something there at his father's house. What is it? Five brothers. I have five brethren that may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto them, they have Moses and the what? What is that? That is the, they had the word of God in their dispensation at that time. They had the doctrine. They had the, the, the Bible. They had Israel's mail there. And you know what they failed to do? Read it. You know what they failed to do? Believe it. You know what they failed to do? Trust it. They probably failed to give the animal sacrifices too at that time during that period different dispensation than what we live in today. In verse 30, he says, And nay, Father Abraham, but if one went up from the dead, they will repent. And he, Abraham, said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. And I tell you that over 2,000 years now, that rich man is still in hell in the lake of fire. And what was God's will? What was God's will? God's will is to have what? All men to be saved, men to be saved and come in the knowledge of truth. What's the knowledge of truth? Well, today in the dispensation of grace, what is the knowledge of truth? This dispensation, the body of Christ, Romans through Philemon. You know, I, I, uh, when I was with the kids, we were doing the Bible camp, and I was showing the kids just how simple this is. You've got your Bible here. We've got a big, big, you know, the Bible's a lot of information. A lot of information. But if you take a look, here it is, exactly. All this on the side, the left side, is all Israel. It's primarily Israel's mail. This is Israel's mail here. You've got Hebrews to Revelation, Israel's mail. The, what is right division? Right division is not Old Testament, New Testament. Right division, rightly dividing the word of truth, is Romans, understanding Romans mail, these little 13 epistles. Look at how skinny this is. This is the but now. Yes. 
this little bit right here. Now, when I was youngster, or not youngster, when I started learning the grace message, I was one of the kids, by the way, in school that I would flip the words around. I would have that, you know, the, the flipping of the words and dyslexia, and it was bad. I was, when I was kids reading out loud, I was when everybody started laughing at it. Man, Rock can't read worth a lick, you know? And, and that's okay. And, you, and I was like, wow, even God can use me. I can hardly read. And, you know, who, who am I, right? And here, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm, I get saved. And I have a desire to read. And, you know, I learned something. You know what I learned? You can get the audio of the Bible on, on audio tape. And I was like, hot diggity dog. I go, I, I can do that. You know, and I started reading Romans through Philemon over and over and over and over, week after week after week after week. I kept reading Romans through Philemon. I do it once a week, every week. And I was like, wow, this is the, I mean, this is great. And then my son, who's a techie kid, he's in his 20s, mid, late 20s now. And uh, he goes, you know, Dad? I can put this stuff on, uh, instead of that audio cassette, I can put it on a little, your iTunes, your, your little iPod, your iPod. Yeah. I go, really? And I, what's an iPod? You know? And, and then, he, then I have to learn the whole thing about an iPod. And it's this little device. It's a little skinny thing. I've got the whole Bible in there. I go, Danny, this is great. Yes. You got it? Now, here's what my son taught me. This is really good. He goes, you know, Dad, you can actually compress it because all the airspace that's in there, you can compress it. And what can happen, you can actually speed up. When you're reading now, so what I do is I read it like double the speed. It doesn't sound like Mickey Mouse or anything. It just sounds regular. And what I wind up doing is I follow along. Now I'm a speed reader. Because, and, and I can go through Romans through Philemon in three hours and 20 minutes. So usually when I'm going out cutting the grass or doing something, you know what I'm doing? I am listening to the Bible every single time. I, if I got to go out there and do uh, yard work or something like that, I'm listening to the Word of God as well. And then I have the ability to read Romans 2, Philemon, and do it and understand the words, how to say and pronounce the words. You know, that's a good thing too, uh, because I was way off before I got the audio <laughs> stuff. And, but the thing is, here you can, you can learn. And I thank God for technology. As bad as technology can sometimes be, it's good, too. Amen. And I thank God that I can have this little iPod, and so can you, and you can listen to the Word of God over and over and over again. Amen. Now, my wife, she's a phenomenal reader. She reads, like, a, um, a novel, like, every three days. Mm. Now, I read a novel like never. Yeah. I remember Ricky Jordan saying, you know, you know how you all read novels, and my wife goes like this to me. <laughs> You've never read a novel in your life. If I read it, like I read a paragraph, I forget what the next paragraph, you know, after, it's like, where am I? Where, you know? So that was my brain I had to use. That's what I've got to work with. But, you know, I had concussions, multiple concussions and things, so, you know, it might have had effect on my thinking. But you know what? You know what I do? I actually have to put the verses down. Because for me to go and try to say, oh, that verse is there, and that verse is there, and that verse is there, it's not going to happen with this brain. But I make do with what I've got. Amen. And the thing is, you make do with what you've got. I don't care what your age is. I don't care what your background has been. Who you are, and, and let's go over this right now, who you are is a new creature in Christ. You are a new creature. That old sin-cursed nature, that old Adam of you that you and I were in, we're no longer part of that. Take a look over at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. In 1 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 18. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. We have been restored to the original intent that God wanted us to be in. And we're doing it now in this vile body that one day is going to go back to the dust of the ground. But we have joy because we're going to get a new what? Glorified body. I look forward to that glorified body. I'm not hacking and coughing. You know, I don't, I, I'll have my eyes working. I, you know, as we get older, does the body start to deteriorate just a little bit or a lot? You know, I, I'm in my mid-50s now. It's like, Wow. It's amazing what's happening to the body. Just absolutely amazing. But you know what? We endure. And you know what Paul? Paul talks about enduring till the end. He's yeah. finished his course. Yeah. 
And I thank God for that. And he's looking forward to that prize. That, and, I, and I look forward to that. And, you know, I, I appreciate all of those that have been participating here at this event. Uh, those that are preaching. Those that are teaching. Those that are helping the children. Those that are praying for this ministry. Those online that are watching on the Internet. I pray to God and I thank God for all of them. Everyone. Why? Because we are a living organism, the body of Christ. This is not some organization where we're going to have, you know, 1099s and, uh, you know, and we're going to have, you know, presidents and CEOs and all that other kind of stuff. No, you know what? We're going to have positions that God Almighty is going to give to us. We're going to have these positions in eternity. And you know what? It's going to be the best job we ever have. And it's okay if I do yard work. If that's my job, you know, no problem. Whatever, God, whatever you want to give me, I thank you for it. And I like uh, what Brother uh, uh, Ross said earlier. He goes, if you're going to try, I think it was him that said it. You know, if you want to try to be the, you know, the, the king of all this stuff, you know, you kiss it goodbye because now, you know, you know what that is? That's your pride trying to make, you're telling God what to do. <laughs> really? <laughs> He's telling us what to do. I'd much rather listen to God and believe him than me trying to with my infant, you know, fizzle, you know, brain, you know, Lord, wherever you want me. And every one of you, you have that privilege, the honor, the blessing to be who you are in Christ. And the thing is, we don't have to wait till we get our new glorified body. We can do it right We can walk by grace through faith. One of the verses uh, at the Bible camp, my grandson learned, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Timothy 2, 15, he learned that one at the Bible camp. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you're not rightly dividing this word of truth, the Bible will never make sense. If you want to try to say, you know what, I need to take Israel's mail and Paul's mail and mix it all together, you know what you have? Religion. You have religion, that's exactly what Satan wants. Religion's appealing to the flesh. Or to reckon that old man what? Dead. Dead. We are new creatures in Christ. Take a look over at, um, oh, let's... Um, let, let me continue on here. So therefore, if any man, we'll start in the beginning again, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto who? Himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are something. We are a new creature in Christ. Who are we? Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God to beseech us by you, we pray you in Christ that be ye reconciled to God. We're ambassadors. Do you know what an ambassador does? An ambassador it goes out on behalf of the government and what we have is a governmental position in the heavenly realm, and here we are ambassadors for Christ. Do you know as an ambassador, what kind of soil are we on? We're on foreign soil. We're on foreign soil right now. We don't belong here. We're here temporarily. But we're ambassadors. Why? What are we ambassadors to do? To present the gospel message. What's God's will? God wants everyone to be saved and come under the knowledge of truth. The only problem is, Man chooses not to believe it, and that's sad, but that's reality. It is what it is, um, and it is. I mean, just, it is. Uh, let's take a look at it, uh, another thing here with regards to where we are. Uh, let's, say, let's take a look over at uh, verse number 21. For he, God, hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That is who we are. We are a new creature in Christ. Take a look over at um, Galatians 6.14. And we're almost done here. <clears throat> in Galatians 6.14, in Galatians 6.14, but God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For in verse 15, Galatians 6, 15. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new what? A new creature. So now look at this. Today in this dispensation of grace, as the nation Israel was falling in Romans, we learn about the nation Israel falling in Romans 11, 11. We also learn in Romans 11, 13 that we have this guy, Saul of Tarsus, that becomes our apostle Paul, that now this is our apostle today in the dispensation of grace. As a matter of fact, when I talked to that young lady over at the uh, area where you can get the drinks, when she gave me a clear gospel salvation, I asked her the next question. Who's your apostle today? Huh? Who's your apostle today? What do you think most people say when I ask that question? Yeah, the 12. Or primarily, they usually say one guy. Who? Peter, right? Peter is part of Israel's mail up here. What right division means, and it's so simple, Right division is understanding that starting in Romans, going all the way to Philemon, God has ushered in this dispensation of grace. And by ushering in this dispensation, and dispensation is a real simple word to understand. You know, like if you, if you go to a hospital, hospitals will dispense out medicine. They're, so it's a dispensing, a dispensing out. What God does, God's the same today, yesterday, forever. What God does is deal with man differently. God's the same, but he's dealing with man differently. For 2,000 years now, Jews and Gentiles and Muslims and whatever other religions you want to put in there, all of them can become a member of the body of Christ by trusting in their Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we do have people that get saved from all different religions. We have some of the saints over our local assembly. They got saved listening to Les Feldick. They got saved, and, and Muslims. And I, and I thank God that we have a clear gospel message today with regards to God's word, rightly divided, understanding Paul's epistles, and trusting by grace through faith in the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. A couple of other verses real quick. Romans chapter number uh, 12. This is just a, a couple of, uh, just having the right attitude in your walk. Let lo- in Romans 12, 9, let love be without dissimulation. We're to abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Cleave to that word. Now, verse 10, be kindly affection one to another with what? Brotherly love. Be what? Kindly affection with brotherly love in honor doing what? Preferring one another. Isn't that nice? Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 32. In Ephesians 4, 32. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So we can be kind. We can forgive. <laughs> And we just, no, thank God. Thank God for, you know what we have? We have grace. <laughs> Amen. Yes, yes. All right, let's take a look over at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice for a sweet smell and savor. We, as dear children of God, have the opportunity and privilege to walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. And in Colossians, got a couple more and then we're, we're going to be done. Uh, Colossians 4, verse number 5. In Colossians 4, 5, we have the privilege and the honor as new creature in Christ, as saints of the Most High God, as members of the body of Christ, in Colossians 4, 5, we have the opportunity and privilege to walk in wisdom toward them that are without. We, are, we have the ability to redeem the time. Redeem the time. Let your speech be always with grace and season with salt, that ye may know how you ought to answer every man. You know what that means? Also, be prepared. Get into the Word. Read it. Study it. Because people are going to start asking you what? Questions. And you want to be able to help them. 
you know, Brother Ray, when he was talking about earlier today, Ray Keeble, you know, he, for 20 years now, he's been answering and fielding questions after questions after questions for 20 years. Do you think he's sharp as a tack when it comes to knowing and giving answers to people? Yes. You know how you learn that? You're in the battlefield. You're talking. You're reaching out. You're, 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 you're connecting with lost souls to get them saved. Uh, take a look at Colossians 1.27. <clears throat> In Colossians 1.27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is what? Christ in you. You've got God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit that indwells you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Uh, Philippians, and I got three more and we're done. Philippians chapter number three, verse 10. In Philippians, take a look over at Philippians. Um, let me go here. In Philippians chapter number three, in Philippians 3.10, this is such a wonderful passage of Scripture. This is the Apostle Paul talking about his Savior, our Savior. And he says in Philippians 3.10, that I may know him, the Lord Jesus Christ, that I may know him in the what? The power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Wow. <coughs> chapter number 4, or go to chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. In Philippians 4, 8 and 9. Finally, brethren. <coughs> Wait one second. We're going we're gonna to have a break for the finally because I need a drink. Uh, finally. Okay, let's take a look here. In Philippians chapter number 4, verse number 8. <coughs> finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, the word of God rightly divided. Whatsoever things are honest, the word of God rightly divided. Whatsoever things are just, the word of God rightly divided. Whatsoever things are pure, the word of God rightly divided in the KJV. Whatsoever things are lovely in the word of God. Whatsoever things are of good report in the word of God. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, do what? Think on those things. Those things which you have both learned uh, let me read this again. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. In the last verse in Romans chapter number 8. In Romans chapter number 8, verse number 18. In Romans 8, 18, Paul says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Hence, the message today, the gospel clarity and expectation of who we have in our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And knowing who we are, as that member of the body of Christ, and walking by grace through faith, living it out. Because we are a living organism of believers that put their faith in their Savior. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your loving grace. And Father, thank you for the saints that are here uh, that had the, uh, uh, the help and the support to, to uh, allow me to be able to just very simply present a clear gospel message. I pray that, Lord, that it was clear. And Father, I just thank you for these saints that encouraged me, and they have been a tremendous encouragement to, uh, uh, to, to <laughs> kind of just follow along with my silliness sometimes, but I just, I just do everything, Lord, for you. And Father, just thank you for another day of grace. Thank you for another day for the lost to get saved and for the saints to get edified. Father, thank you for those that are out there suffering to serve you and to serve your son. And Father, we just give you all the thanks and praise and the honor and glory and everything that you're doing by extending this grace. And Father, we love you. And we just thank you in Christ's precious name. Amen.